Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dino. Thank you so much for joining in. Today is 29th November 2021. AWS reInvent 2021 is going on and we are going to discuss something very brand new from Amazon Web Services AWS. So today AWS released a completely new feature under AWS Migration Hub called refactor if spaces and you can see under the uh, migration hub this refactor if spaces is available and it is under preview this capability will seamlessly reduce the networking complexity when refactoring your large monolith applications into microservices in this video i'm going to demonstrate these capabilities by picking up a smaller monolith application and then how that networking traffic can be routed into the microservice applications without even changing your uh, monolith application code so let's get it started First of all, let's try to understand why we need this service. If you have large monolith applications, you might be facing a lot of issues like scaling issues, lower business agility, high time to market and many more. To overcome these issues, most of the customers these days are refactoring their monolith applications to microservices. But designing and building the necessary infrastructure for this refactoring journey can be time consuming. In between these refactoring stages, both of the monolith application and the microservice applications needs to coexist because entire refactoring journey might take years depending on how large your monolith application is. That is where the AWS Migration Hub refactoring spaces comes into play to help you. It provides an environment that makes refactoring application journey in AWS faster and also easier. Here I have a small application called uh, Fancy Store. I'm going to use this as the monolith application because it has uh, different services like products and orders. If you look at the product service, you can see uh, it is making an API call into the service uh, slash products. It is hitting on the monolith application itself and we are getting the uh, response and those response details will be appearing in the products catalog here. I have a microservice application as well. So I have segregated this uh, product service into a different microservice and then that is running on products different uh, URL. And also you can see uh, the URL pattern can also be different. It is on API slash products and also it is written in the same list of products but to identify these services are coming from the microservice based application. I have put a small prefix here MS denoting the microservices. Now, if we look at the underlying infrastructure, how does it look like? If we go into the AWS VPC, I have the multiple VPCs here. I have the uh, microservices VPC, monolith VPC. Inside the monolith VPC, I have my monolith application running inside the EC2. I have another VPC for the uh, microservice and then that is running in separate EC2 with my products microservice. On top of both of them, I have created a load balancer and I have my monolith ALB as well as the microservices ALB. So that's why I'm accessing the monolith application using the monolith ALB. I have mapped it into my domain name and then in the same way, my product service is mapped into my uh, microservices uh, ALB. If you are doing this in a real world scenario, not only this application can be in a single AWS account, it can be in different AWS accounts as well like this. So you have a separate AWS account in that one you have the monolith VPC and separate AWS account or multiple AWS accounts with the microservices VPC. So before doing the microservices implementation, we need to prepare our environment such that all of our traffic, let's say when it comes to the services products endpoint, we should be able to route the services products not to the monolith application right into our uh, microservice application without making any code changes into our uh, monolith. To do that, what we do is in refactor spaces, we create the environment 
within that environment actually it will provision a aws transit gateway such that when you have multi account infrastructure it can connect all of your monolith or multiple microservice uh, vpcs through the uh, transit gateway and also rather than sending the direct user traffic into the application load balancer now after setting up the environment you can send the traffic uh, through the api gateway so in that case for specific routes if you want to send the traffic not to the monolith uh, send it into microservice you can make those configurations easily uh, with the refactor spaces so now let's go into the migration hub refactor spaces go into the environments and let's try to create a new environment as my application is fancy store uh, this is my uh, fancy store environment then i will click on next now you can see a small diagram here denoting this is my environment look like everything about these uh, monolith application microservices and also this routing vpc right everything will be part of the environment so now we are going to create an application uh, let's say fancy store application for this application you can see this is where it tries to create this particular infrastructure transit gateway network load balancer because these these apis are private integrations so it has a network load balancer and also the api gateway part to set up this part you need to have a separate uh, vpc i have already created this refactoring environment vpc and in that vpc id is ending with 779 so if we go back here i will be selecting the that vpc as my application uh, environment as we are creating an api gateway uh, api so that api can be a regional or else private so here in this example i will create a, a regional api so i will click next as we have the refactor spaces environment in this account but my monolith application or the other microservices can be in different accounts so in that case our transit gateway needs to be shared with resource access manager with these other aws accounts so in that case you can add those account ids here or else you can share your transit gateway with your aws organization as well in our scenario all of our vpcs are sitting uh, inside a single aws account so we don't need to make any changes here so i'll go next and then let's click on the create environment button it took around 15 minutes to create the environment and our initial fancy store application you can see both of them are in the healthy state and if we go into our vpc it has created a new transit gateway uh, and you can see it is in the available state and also for each application it is creating a api gateway as well and in network load balancer if we go into the api gateway we can see that from the name of the application that we have given fancy is to application it has created the api but it doesn't have any routes or endpoints created at this moment because we didn't create any of the configurations let's uh, create a service service means uh, restful apis where our application business logic is running for an example we have our monolith application uh, running inside this domain name so let's try to create a new service uh, for this monolith application here my service name is monolith and then my monolith application is running in the uh, monolith vpc uh, so here my monolith vpc is ending with 301 so let me select that vpc uh, why we select this uh, vpc is because it will create a transit gateway attachment into our monolith vpc such that our environment uh, vpc uh, can connect with our monolith application my endpoint is this one my monolith domain name and also you can put some health check uh, as well and also uh, i need to mark this particular service as my default route so in that case if there is no other uh, route configurations by default the traffic will be routed into my monolith and the monolith application capabilities will serve that functionality so this is my configuration let me create the service now a service is ready uh, you can see the uh, service status is healthy and also it has created a route uh, into the source path slash into our monolith application so if we go back into the api gateway and do a, a small refresh 
we should be able to see the routes you can see it has created a proxy route uh, with the any uh, methods and then it is having the integration into our monolith application so that means everything which comes every traffic which is coming into the this path will get routed into our uh, monolith application and also it has created the stage and did the deployment into this production stage I prefer to rather than accessing my application using this API gateway URL I always like to use the custom domain names so here uh, let me create a new domain name I'll use app domain name and then create it so I have the ACM certificates ready at this moment and then I'll create the domain name so and you can see it has already created a URL for me let me go into my route 53 I have the hosted zone here I'll make the app uh, subdomain mapping uh, into this uh, URL I already have a route for app and let me edit the record and then I will be routing it into right here now I have the kind of domain mapping then we need to map our custom domain into our uh, deployed stage so here I will select my fancy store app and the production stage I need to map it into my uh, root path so I will keep the path empty and then I will save it so now if I copy this domain name and then open up a new URL uh, HTTPS we can access our monolith application uh, the difference is all of our requests are routing through our API gateway going through the network load balancer and the AWS transit gateway then it is hitting on the monolith application load balancer and reaching our monolith application EC2s we can access all of the functionalities and you can see all the functionalities are working fine our next step is uh, this product service we need to send it not to our monolith application we need to send it to our a newly written uh, microservice so to do that uh, let's go into the migration hub so if we go into the application uh, fancy store application we can see the services as well as the routes so let's create a new service now uh, for our products microservice products microservice is deployed under the microservices VPC ending with 584F let me select that VPC 584F now my endpoint my endpoint is uh, this one uh, my product service and then I need to route uh, let's say this monolith slash service products everything under this even including the sub parts into my newly written microservice to do that so I'll go here a source path is slash service products include all the paths all the methods and I'll click on uh, create service button and then it will create my product service now our product service is created so if we go back into the API gateway and look at the our API uh, you can see we have our initial proxy created for our monolith and then this is our monolith and additionally for our slash service slash products this another proxy uh, got created and then that is sending that traffic into our products uh, microservice now if we go back into our fancy store our app url initially we got the product details like this but as we written our microservice we have included a small prefix called ms when we refresh our URL, we should see MS prefix is coming like that. So that's how you can uh, use the uh, refactor spaces. So what we have done is we have created an environment. So once you create it, it will create a uh, transit gateway setup and then you can share it with multi accounts as well. And afterwards you will create an application when you are creating the application you provide a VPC uh, for your initial setup for the network load balancer as well as it will create a API gateway 
and then uh, you will be creating your services accordingly we have created our monolith service that monolith service is running in a separate url and then we have routed our default uh, traffic into the monolith service and then we have created the a product service and then we had a different route and then we uh, make the uh, routing changes like that way you can make the uh, changes once you create this microservice if you come across newly written microservice has some issues in that case you need Need to delete this route so you can just select the products and then products route and then uh, delete that so once that is deleted right if we go back into our fancy store and then try to refresh it we should go back into our older uh, version of the uh, uh, monolith application that uh, you can see our routing rules has been restored back into the originals so in that case the traffic is again coming back to monolith so it is much much easier to uh, make the routing changes create multiple services make those configurations imagine that if you want to set up everything by yourself so you need to have a proper aws team aws engineers in your project to make that those configurations available and also for every microservice you need to go and then make those changes that's a big big hassle so um, with this new service introduced by aws the refactor spaces you can very easily create your entire infrastructure with few clicks within few minutes you can have this environment available and you can only focus on the application refactoring journey so that will simplify most of your work thank you so much for uh, watching this video i hope you learned something new in this video don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button i am dino a certified solution architect professional see you again in another video until that bye bye